Hello and welcome to our practice web demo. Today we're scheduled for about an hour and we're going to discuss the typical new patient visit in practice web software. And we're going to discuss the following items in this next slide. Uh, you'll notice that it, it is lettered here and the way that it moves is from the top left down and back to the top right and down. So we're discussing a typical new patient visit. You'll notice on letter A, add a new patient, and we're going to discuss the three items noted, creating um, an account, scheduling appointments, and sending out messages. Part B of that is the patient registration process, including the forms insurance plan adding as well as scanning and capturing x-rays. Uh, letter C is dental charting where you're going to be working most doctor. Um, we're going to do whatever you normally would like review medical history, chart existing work, do your treatment plan as well as creating planned appointments. And then as you see we're on letter D there, we're going to present treatment options for our patient as well as show you how to create and send pre-auths. I'm going to bring your attention now to the upper right here so you can complete the appointment, which means basically that you're going to charge whatever services they completed that day or that you completed that day. And this will also tie into our review feature. The next one is patient walkout, collecting any patient portions, working with claims, sending them out, uh, distributing billing statements, and scheduling your next visits. On letter G, we have the end of day activities like backing up your data, sending out batch claims, and locating useful reports. And with that, let's get started. I'm just going to go ahead and orient you a little bit with Practice Web here. So, as soon as you double click into the shortcut that's on your desktop, you're going to be prompted to log in, and then you'll see the appointments module. So the way that this software is built is pertaining or around rather the selected patient towards the upper left part of the software. I'm going to go ahead and show you an image here that's blown up and this tells us a wealth of information. First off in the pink area you'll notice that that's the database name. In the blue, it does tell us that the admin user is logged in. And more importantly, on the uh, the green there, it does tell us the selected patient's information. Uh, the way that I've set it up is by the last name, then first name, and I've also included the patient number in this. And so all the modules on the left-hand side of the software, um, starting from appointments, family, account, treatment plan, chart, and images, all of those pertain to that selected patient. Um, the bottom most module managed, that particular module is strictly for administrative type of features um, and not to the selected patient. So I'm going to go ahead and bring us back into my training database. At this point, I want to go ahead and show you the easiest way to schedule a new patient visit. My patient has called in and they want a 2 p.m. appointment. It's been a while since they had a cleaning. So I'm going to double click into the hygienist's 2 p.m. slot here because that's open. And what that will do is it will automatically bring up our select patient list. And the reason for this is because we want to make sure we're not duplicating any accounts for um, what we would term new patients. So this person's last name is Valera and her first name is Leonor. And once I enter in the first and last name, you'll see that there are no results on the left-hand side where the select patient section is. Like She indeed has not been seen by us. Towards the bottom right, if I can bring your attention down there, there is an add PT or add patient button. I'm clicking on that. And that automatically brings me to this edit patient information window. And here I can just enter in some basic information um, that this is a female patient. This is her birth date. I'm also going to grab her wireless number and say that texting is OK. Um, I'm going to grab her carrier as well as a uh, good email address. So here I go. I'm just going to type that in really quickly. And so Obviously, we want to make sure we have some basic contact information to correspond with this new patient. 
Clicking OK then moves us to the Edit Appointment window. And so in this, we'll be able to add in whatever treatment we need. Typically for a new patient in this case, I'm going to bring your attention to this white box up here and select the top line. By clicking on that top line, it allows me to treatment plan these five procedures as you see them, um, because the, these are the procedures we normally perform. Um, I'm also going to bring your attention to the bottom left here where we can include uh, an appointment note. So our patient is stating that she has pain in the upper left and she hasn't had cleaning in a while. And with that, once we click OK, we'll then be able to see that this appointment indeed had been scheduled for 2 p.m. I'm going to go ahead and just use my mouse to drag this up so it fits perfectly within that one hour time slot. And you'll notice that there's a wealth of information for this appointment that we just created, namely the procedures that we have there. Um, we also have your production numbers. Now I want to bring your attention to the upper right here where our confirmation, confirmation bubble is. This is used in connection with PW Connect to send texts and email reminders and confirmation messages to your patient. So the reason why this is really popular is it saves time for your front office and prevents no-shows. There's no constant follow-up to confirm appointments um, and patients are more likely to respond via text on a phone or email, you'll be able to get that response a lot sooner than had it been like a postcard or such. So you can also reschedule appointments via text. Patients are more likely to remember to show up for their appointment if you remind them about it. Your front staff would not have to use a big part of their day to make these things happen as it does happen on an automatic basis. And if I could bring your attention to this blow up, you'll notice that green here stands for confirmed. We also have other statuses like yellow for phone call, and we also have red. Now, this is a confirmed appointment on my schedule, and I want to bring your attention next to the dashboard here with the orange one. This is a confirmed conversation from Antonio. This is a phone conversation asking to reschedule. And we also finally have the sample of a cancel type of conversation as you see before you. So back to today, you'll notice that to the left of the con confirmation list that we do have several what I term easy buttons. The red U is going to be for unscheduled. The black X is going to be for broken and the blue is for complete appointments, and we have a delete button. Let's say, for instance, the 2 p.m. Jane Doe, she called in to break her appointment. It's just a matter of us selecting her appointment, and again, I'll bring your attention to the upper left here where it does state that Jane Doe is the selected patient, and that will then allow me to use this black X here to break that appointment, and it will ask me to confirm that. Um, as part of this database, I chose to prompt whether we should charge um, and document the fact that this person has broken their appointment, and that'll help us historically determine whether a uh, patient of record is a habitual breaker of appointments, and I could then choose to charge them out. In this case, I'm just, I'm not going to do that. Um, and once I click OK, that big black X will be there. Um, as a standard of protocol, just to make sure that you're keeping your production um, as high as possible, with that same appointment, we encourage you to use the unscheduled list to follow up on them. And so to send them to the unscheduled list, I'll bring your attention again to the, um, the red U that is right above that black X. And that button is going to ask us to confirm to send this appointment to that particular list. And then that frees up this appointment slot for any one of our patients that were marked as ASAP wanting to come in sooner than their scheduled appointment. 
So I'll bring your um, attention now to the upper right here where my calendar is. So you'll see the January 29, and to the left of that is the, uh, the abbreviation for Tuesday. And right above that is going to be our appointment lists, or uh, we term them keep your schedule full lists. So a busy schedule usually translates to more revenue. Here you have several lists that you can avail of and look at manually. Um, we do have these lists working in coordination, as you know, and for confirmations. We also have some recall reminders via email or text that can also be auto-sent to remind your patients to contact your office. And so the recall list looks like this. Um, if you wanted to perform any functions directly from this list or even print it off, um, those options would be available to you. I'm going back into here to show you the confirmation list. I think it might like this. So, so these are all our scheduled appointments. And because this is my test database, obviously we have all of um, this stuff that's quite old. However, you'll notice that for um, any of these appointments here that were recently scheduled, it'll note a wealth of information so you can follow up with them. However, you do have the Practice Web Connect feature to help you with that process. This is the unscheduled list, and um, as you see, there's Jane Doe on here. She's, she canceled for today, and we're going to use this list to follow up on her. By right-clicking on her name, I'll be able to send this to the pin board, and let's say that we discussed that she wants to reschedule this for the 31st um, at the same time, and in which case we'll go ahead and drag this appointment to that time slot, and we have then added her back to the schedule and done as much follow-up as we can. Uh, lastly, uh, planned appointments. These planned appointments um, are useful for helping you keep track of people who do actually have active treatment plans, who have signed off on them, and you need to get them on the schedule. Um, so ideally, you want to keep that, that list quite short because you want to make sure that they are coming in as soon as possible. All right, so I'm just going to manually mark this as confirmed. And you'll notice again that the confirm color is this green by default. At this point, um, let's just say that the appointment time has arrived and I want to indicate that by using the ARVD option from the list. And what that does is it updates to a teal color. It will then also start counting how long Leonor has been waiting. And so at that point, we'll be able to track how on average how long our patients have been waiting for them to get sent back and making the improvements on that regard and at this point when um, you're performing new patient registration you want to make sure they have all of their forms completed i'm going to show you an example of the medical history form here for leonora all right and so this is the generic medical history form for a new patient I have the last and first name of my patient as well as birth date. She indicated here that she's taking these two medications, has these allergies, and had these medical conditions. So once that's complete, she'll be able to use the submit button, um, and this will then be retrievable in your in-office database. Um, and that's what this guy is. So if we go under the tools section, uh, and web forms will be able to use this retrieve new forms button and that will then show us that hey Leonor got her forms in here now that is your medical history web form you can customize them to suit whatever your office needs we also um, as a paperless option have this this iPad application called the patient enroll pro and that application allows you to do all of the things that we did so far, as well as other things like capturing images so that your front office staff, again, could be focused on any patients that are at the front office desk. Okay, so this is the welcome screen. This essentially is how your patients will check in. 
they're going to be able to put in their last name, their date of birth, and check in, in which case you'll then be able to prepare whatever forms they need to complete that they haven't already. And if I could bring you to the next slide here, we do have these four that are quite common, as you see, and they are indeed marked incomplete. You can also put in any consent forms so that they'll be able to sign those. This is a sample of what the registration form actually looks like. And I'm going to bring your attention to the patient photo and driver's license here where it has the camera. So this particular application allows you to take, just like you would on your iPad or your phone, photos or capture images of the things that, were, that are requested. And the cool thing about all of this is that all of this information does get inputted directly into the patient's chart in Practice Web. So that allows you to save up time for your front office. It can be used for new and existing patients to check and register and complete all their forms on the iPad. Um, it streamlines your patient forms. It's very patient friendly. And like I mentioned earlier, reduces staff time for manual entry. And it prevents also costly entry errors here. You'll notice that here on this next slide, we have the medical history new patient. And you can also sign or have the patient sign here. Once you're, the patient is done, they'll essentially get this prompt here, please hand over the iPad to the front desk, and with that we can uh, proceed with the rest of our appointment here. So I have Leonore again on the top left. I'm just clicking on the family button right here with a three-person graphic. And this is where the patient information, contact information like address and all of that could be reaccessed. Um, you can just double click into this patient information and manually type it in. However, if you did have that iPad application or even used web forms to that effect, all of that would be plugged into this. And here is where you would also, more importantly, add in any insurance information. To the left of that, you have other items that you can do in reference to adding, moving, uh, resetting, and deleting family members. But again, um, this Add Insurance button would, if you click on it, allow you to enter in the subscriber information. And in this case, a patient is a subscriber. Um, and it automatically brings up our edit insurance plan uh, window. So if you're converting from a different software into Practice Web, more than likely you already at least have some entries for insurance plans already built in. If they didn't exist yet, you can manually enter in the information. In this particular database, I actually have a list of insurance plans, so I'm using that button. And I'm going to select the topmost um, insurance plan here and click OK. And just as easily as that, I am able to add in insurance coverage for Leonore. And it's just a matter of me going to the uh, top right here to enter in her subscriber ID. And we can click OK. So now Le Leonore has her primary coverage already added. If you needed to add in additional coverage, like secondary or even medical, Practice Web is capable of doing that. You would just need to add insurance again by clicking on that button and proceed there. If you double click into the plan that you've just created, you'll be able to see a summary of the benefit and coverages. You can double click into that benefit information and make whatever changes that you need to. You can also do this on an um, individual family member basis, and then that way they'll be able to get that coverage inputted for more accurate insurance estimates. I'm going to bring your attention now to the images module. So this images module here uh, has several folders, as you see towards the left. The compatible scanners have a Twain driver or Twain software. Um, so anything T-W-A-I-N, um, that means essentially that you can directly scan into Practice Web. Um, these folders also have specific functions you can assign to them. And let me demonstrate importing as well as the functionality here. I'm going to go ahead and click on the import button. And then that will then allow me to access my patient photo. In this case, I see it here. And once I double click on that, I'll then be able to select the folder or category of patient pictures and click OK. 
And that would not only house my patient's photo there, but also in other relevant areas of the software uh, here in the family module, as well as when I hover over Leonore's appointment at the 2 p.m. slot. Um, so back into the images module here. Any of the captured images from the patient enroll iPad app will automatically be placed in here. Patient pictures would be placed there if you had any other captures like a driver's license or insurance card. This is where to locate that information. I'll have you bring your attention here to the toolbar that's towards the middle top. We have several, and I just actually enabled four of these, several program bridges that you can enable so that you can access your imaging software from practice web for the selected patient. All right, and so now I'm just going to bring you back to the appointments module here, and we can now um, indicate that Leonore is going to be seated, and so the front off or back office rather would be able to select her patient and mark her as seat thus removing her from the waiting room. And in that nonverbal way, we can communicate that Leonore is now in treatment. So this chart module here, I'm gonna go ahead and just move my way from the bottom left and then clockwise. Um, you'll notice that the pink area here has items that would be pertaining to medical history. And now that I've actually retrieved my medical history form for this patient, I can click on the forms button. I'll highlight by single left clicking on the patient uh, history here and click on import. And this is where you would choose the responses to import. In this case, we wanna make sure that citalopram is selected. And that's a legitimate spelling and that Zyrtec is selected as well. And anything with an X under do import is going to be imported into that pink area. So once we click on import, it'll mark it as done. And as easily as this, we'll be able to note that these are her allergies, medications, and these are her problems. Right above that, we have a text box that is not for treatment. It's more for conversation starters, things that are not um, directly related to treatment. Right above that um, is going to be the 3D odonogram and it works with the chart module tabs to display treatment with various statuses. Um, that entry status is right here. We have it defaults to treatment plan, then you can uh, mark things complete and any other status as you see there. If I can bring your attention to the, uh, the upper part of that where we have our chart module specific toolbar, you'll notice that we can create written or electronic prescriptions, uh, lab cases, chart your periodontal, um, measurements, you even have a place here to put in your ortho charts doctor. Um, and we also have consent forms. Now, these are the ones that I created. So a wealth of things that you can do here. Um, but the things that I want to um, focus more on is the actual charting aspect of this. So beginning with existing treatment, I'm going to go ahead and use the entry status here to go ahead and um, select the existing other. I'm going to put in that 116, 17, and 32. Um, all of those are missing. So after highlighting them, I'm going to bring your attention here towards the tab on the top middle where missing teeth is. And I'm going to mark these teeth as uh, missing. Um, all right. So let's say on a radiographic level, 16 actually was present. It was just not uh, very clear on the x-ray up until we took a really good look at it. Um, not missing would then allow you to make that return and show up again. Um, I'm also going to make sure that I have um, noted whatever other restorations are on here. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and chart on 14 and 15 um, that we have some MOD fillings on there. I'm using my procedure buttons here and the quick buttons. Um, and these quick buttons come as a default with the software. It does assign whatever specified surfaces there are on the button to document that. And easily I'm able to chart the existing uh, MODs on 14 and 15. So um, the other thing that happens is the actual charting would be listed here under the all. Um, you'll notice that 14 and 15 are added. 
Right below that, everything assigned for today will show up in yellow by default. Um, and we can also uh, recall the note that she placed in here that she's experiencing pain in the upper left. On our radiographs, it indicates that these two teeth have significant fractures due to these large restoration and we thus have abscesses. And now at this point, we want a treatment plan to address those things because obviously she's in pain. I'm going to make sure my entry status here is treatment plan. So when I highlight 14 and 15, and I'm going to use my customized procedure buttons here, I'll be able to put in the fact that we need um, this multi-treatment here. Uh, so I'm selecting the RCTBUPFM indicative of endodontic therapy, a buildup, and a porcelain fused to metal crown. And you'll notice that all of these procedures in a single click were treatment planned in this multi-stage type of treatment. And so at this point, we can create planned appointments for these specific ones just to make sure um, that we'll get that followed up on and scheduled as necessary. So here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring your attention to the planned appointments tab. And we can click on the add button. And because 14 seems to be the more bothersome, I'm going to make sure that we have number 14 here scheduled. So I'm going to go ahead um, and also indicate on the left-hand side how much time I need for that particular appointment, um, which provider is going to be uh, performing that appointment, and also indicate um, any notes pertaining to that. So check pre-auth. Um, and with that, once I click OK, you'll be able to then communicate to your front office what needs to happen next without literally telling them. I'm also going to do the same for number 15 here. So I'm selecting number 15, indicating how much time uh, would need be needed for that. Um, and here we go. I'm just going to put in that that's the next visit. All right. And so now I'm going to go ahead and really quickly show you how to, to complete any procedures. So again, the yellow indicates that this is the activity scheduled for today. Leonore here says that she hasn't had lunch. She's on a time crunch because, you know, she took time off of work and needs to return. So she declines having a fluoride treatment. To complete only the procedures that we actually did perform, I'm going to double click into the appointment for today. I'm going to click on the fluoride to make sure it's not in gray, meaning that that will not be completed or charged out. And I'm going to the upper left here to select a status of complete and finalizing that with an OK. I have created an automation here that reminds me that recall needs to be scheduled after their due date, just because my my staff tends to forget, but that's okay. And you'll notice that any of the procedures that we completed today now is marked in blue, although it still has that, that yellow there. I'll also point out the fact that notes can be generated as of completing procedures. So that's what you see here on the D0274. You can use group notes to attach several procedures to a single note. And to do that, after you complete procedures, you can um, highlight them, right click and select the group note option. And you can start typing in manually your notes. I chose to actually create auto notes for exams. I also associated prompts for the things I commonly would chart here. And I've inputted what I need to at this point. I can just click OK, and that will show up for me to elaborate on in that same text window. When I'm done, I can use the uh, digitally sign option to indicate that this is the, the user that created this note. And here it shows up as its own separate entry. And I chose pink just because that's noticeable. Um, we have several other chart options. So you can use a ZClin procedure code, or you can go ahead and just type it in from within the procedure as well. All right. So now that we've already charted um, existing and our treatment plan work, I'm going to move on now to the treatment plan option where we can present the treatment. So in this case, I'm selecting the treatment plan button. Um, and that then takes me to this list of treatment plan procedures. So the very first thing you should do is to prioritize. In this case, I want to select number 14 as a priority um, and number 15 
as a second priority. And then our flora, we can just say that we recommended that. And um, these priorities can be reworded, whatever verbiage would be relevant to your office. And we can also assign specific colors to make it a little more visible. After prioritizing, that's when you would highlight all the procedures you want to put in a save treatment plan. So I'm highlighting everything here and I'm using the save TP button. And you'll notice that this entry here for today is now added to that treatment plans box. And this serves as a screenshot for you and the patient to indicate that these are the numbers that they discussed, this is what their patient portion is going to be, and the fact that they were given these options to choose from. So once I have a saved treatment plan, I can go ahead and have the patient sign it by clicking on the Sign TP button. And here you'll be able to see graphically what had been presented to them. And your patient can then sign with a mouse, with a stylus, if you had a touch-capable type of screen. And you can click OK. And it will then give you an X under the signed box that this was actually accepted. You can then choose to email or print this treatment plan for your patient to take home with them. And this is also the area where you can go into the active treatment plan and send off any uh, pre-authorization. So number 14 is definitely the one that we need to address first. I'm going to highlight all three of the billable procedures and click on the pre-authorization box up here towards the top left. And that will then allow me to select um, the insurance plan and relationship to subscriber to send this pre-authorization claim to. So this is what the claim window looks like. And towards the bottom, you'll notice that there are certain action buttons that we can perform. You can send electronically from Practice Web. In this case, I'm just going to uh, go ahead and click OK. Um, and that'll allow us to then wait till the very end of the day to send all of our claims out at once. So your pre-authorization status can be tracked on an individual basis up here, or you can go under Reports and Standard and um, you can use the outstanding insurance claims report here towards the bottom left highlighted in red to check for those uh, statuses and follow up on payment. So now that we've built out everything and printed out our treatment plan, we can then go to the account module. And so the account module, as you see, is going to list all of the things that were completed today. And they do, as you notice, have an unsent word here. And that should automatically be a flag for your staff that they need to create a claim. And just like with the pre-auth, we'll highlight the procedures and click on new claim. And we can then generate a claim after verifying that everything was good on here. Again, I in my practice, uh, we choose to leave that at the very end of the day. But just for the sake of showing you what it would look like had it been sent, I'm going to go ahead and mark this as sent manually. And this particular claim always as a default unless you change it, would show up as the red there. So here we can also um, process any patient portions. In this case, this was a recall type visit. So preventive procedures are covered at 100%. However, my patient was prescribed Prevident. And Prevident, as you know, is a highly fluoridated toothpaste. And this is something they have to pay out of pocket for today's visit. No problem. So in Practice Web, I'll bring your attention to the payment button here on the upper left. And this payment button then allows you to note the fact that you did receive $20 on the Prevident. You can add a split towards that effect, which I encourage um, all of my clients to do because you want to know what was paid on what amount went towards that payment or that procedure. So in this case, I'm just attaching the split here and clicking OK. And now once I click on the $20, it'll show here that the patient actually did pay their portion. I'll bring your attention then to our statement options here. I'm going to select the drop down and the bottom most more options. All right, I can go ahead and show you a preview of what our generic statements look like. The summary of everything that you saw on the ledger for this patient and you'll also be able to customize this like say for instance you had a logo you wanted to add you don't like this credit card information um, these statements uh, like forms can be customized and any time that a statement is actually generated be it sent or not it would add an entry to this you see here on the chart just a, a side note on 
patient payments, we also do merchant services with three companies, ProPay, Pay by Text. So that's a really convenient method. We also integrate with XCharge. I'm now going to move on to the walkout process and take you back to our appointments module. So you'll notice that Leonore's completed appointment for today is now in this dark gray color. And by default, that is indicative of a completed appointment. A nonverbal way to communicate that this person is ready to interact with our front office, like scheduling appointments and such. That also triggers a patient review request to be sent. So just a little background on that. Um, it's noted that the vast majority of new patients do actually check online reviews. I, for one, do that when I choose any type of service provider, especially for medical dental. And usually the people with a glowing, quote unquote, online reputation stand out from the crowd. And at that point, you'll be able to get more patients in and thus make more revenue. So the way that our practice web reviews feature works is send out um, review requests automatically. Mm -hmm. You can use a list to exclude anybody that you think would not give you a good review. However, any not good reviews can be dictated with however you set up the actual feature. So let's say on a five, five star scale, five being the highest or an excellent appointment, they give you like a one. You can program it so that those ones will not be visible. And so I just wanted to go ahead and show you on an image level what those review requests would look like. This particularly is for a text request. Your patient will be getting a message like this with the link that they click on to complete. This is the single question patient review. They can also put in any remarks. We also have a multiple question option. And we also have the ability for you to put in reviews on Facebook and all of that. It would require them to sign into whatever accounts they do have for those third parties to make that visible. This is a sample of an actual website, and these are the reviews that were posted for other people to see. In the Practice Web database, there is a PW Reviews button that you can log into, and when I click on that button, it'll allow us to put in our credentials. As you see, and I can see all of my pending or completed reviews, and these are the ones that were submitted. And now back to our appointments module here. I'm going to schedule the recall appointment for Leonore, making sure that her appointment is selected. And now I can bring your attention to the middle right here where the Make Recall button is. I'll be able to click on that button. And it does several things here. Number one, it'll go ahead and move your calendar to six months and one day out, which is around her due date. And any availabilities would then be visible here where the yellow area is. The other thing that happens is Leonora's appointment would actually be treatment planned already and listed in our clipboard or pinboard. And we can just drag that to whichever time slot she was requesting. In this case, I'm just going to click on change provider, but I do not want to change the length. And with that, we have scheduled her recall appointment. Back to today. Under the make recall button, this view pad apps button, and that's just two buttons below. When I click that, it'll show me a history of all of the appointments scheduled, planned, and completed for Leonore. You'll notice that there's a planned one appointment right here. That's one that I want to click on. And I'm going to use the bottom buttons here, copy to pin board. And we could do the same with the recall. It'll be treatment planned on the pin board. We can simply choose a day or a week or month out that she would be next available to come in. I'll also bring to your attention again the fact that Practice Web Connect can send automated confirmation and reminder texts or emails to your patient to remind them about their scheduled appointments. The last thing I want to discuss is our manage module. If I could bring your attention to the far left middle where this manage module is, this is where we can see items that would be applicable at the end of the day. The first thing I want to mention is the backup 
option and this is under this daily section and backup is right here. In order for your office to be HIPAA compliant, you would need to create a backup. And if we click on this button, you'll notice that this process is easily defined. It tells us where our data is currently on our server in Office. And it also allows us to browse for the location that we want to save a copy of this data into. Um, clicking the backup button would then allow you to save a copy of both your database and if you wanted to, you can include your free dental images folder. Backups are just as important as restoring backup because you want to make sure that even though you do have a copy of your live data, you're able to recover that and use it had there been an issue with your live data in Office. The other things that are notable in this module are the batch items. I'm just going to click cancel here and bring your attention again to the top left. You have the ability to send batch claims with the send claims button. Um, anything that is waiting to send will be up here. Anything that has been sent will be towards the bottom half where the history is. If you are in network, with any carrier and you get batch insurance checks, the batch insurance feature would allow you to very easily input those insurance payments via each outstanding claim on that EOB. This is also where you can send in any batch statements. When I click on that button, you should get your filter options here and based off of the choices you make, you can create a list. And the last thing I want to point out in this module is the time clock feature. And here you'll be able to track time card entries for your staff. I'll also want to bring your attention to the upper left to where report is. I'm going to click on that option and click on standard. And this window allows us to see all of the reports built in practice web. The top left you have here the user query button and that's for any custom reports. Right below that would be your production and income, and there are some presets here as you see. Here's a monthly production and income, daily reports, the payments procedures, and then we also have our monthly section lists and all of those other items for you to access. The one I wanna bring up more importantly would be your aging of AR, which is under the monthly section, the outstanding insurance claims report. Again, that's where all, including your pre-authorizations, would be tracked. The procedures not billed to insurance are going to be a list of procedures that would require a claim but don't actually have it. The claims not sent are for any claims that you actually generated but failed to send, either by printing or electronically submitting them. Um, and then lastly, right above that is going to be the patient review select report. And this is the report you can use to exclude any of your patients um, from receiving a request for a patient review. So that was a detailed overview of Practice Web, our powerful and easy to use practice management software. We hope you join the Practice Web family so we can help your dental office thrive. And if you have any questions with like a one-on-one -on -one demo or want to discuss pricing, please contact us at 800-845-9379, option one, or sales at practice-web.com. Thank you and have a great day.